Hi everyone, welcome to the classes on fluid machinery. Today we will be starting our 6th module. So in 6th module we will be dealing mainly with the centrifugal and axial flow compressors. And these two will come under the classification of rotary compressor. So first of all we will see what are the classification of rotary compressor. Rotary compressors are mainly classified into positive displacement and the non-positive displacement compressor or dynamic compressor. Rotary compressors are used when large quantity of air or gas are required at relatively low pressure. Rotary compressors are used. For the reciprocating compressor, we will be using at a higher pressure. The amount of air separated will be less compared to the rotary compressor for a reciprocating compressor. Rotary compressors are used for high quantity of air at a low pressure. Reciprocating compressors are used for low quantity of air at a high pressure. The first classification is positive displacement compressor. So we have already discussed what is a positive displacement pump. We have discussed the reciprocating pump, low pump, vein pump. All these comes under the positive displacement pump. And similarly, we have reciprocating compressor racer, which is also a positive displacement compressor, but will not comes under the classification of rotary compressor. So among rotary compressor, we have two positive displacement compressors that are root blowers and vein compressors. So we have to study its working and PV diagram. Normally it will be asking us a 5 mass question. And the second classification is a dynamic compressor. We will have two types of dynamic compressors, centrifugal and axial flow compressors. So we have to study in detail about centrifugal and axial flow compressor and we have to work out problems on these two compressors. First of all, we will see what is root blower and what is vein compressor. So, root blower is similar to our low pump, which is dealing with the water. In low root blower, we will be using the same lobe. So, working is similar to our low pump. The inlet is uh, normally atmospheric condition. The outlet will be to a storage region at a high pressure. So some amount of air is trapped between the rotating lobe. We have, you can see two lobes are rotating. One is in clockwise direction, another is in anti-clockwise direction. When it is rot comes here, some amount of air is trapped between the lobe and the cylinder wall. So as the lobe is moving forward, that air is pushed along the cylinder wall to the receiver side. The receiver side is at a pressure P2. So when it's traveling inside the pump, it will remain at that most pressure. When it is reaching the delivery side, its pressure is suddenly rises to the higher region. So we will get a higher pressure. It's a steep rise you can see in the PV diagram. Okay. The second one is the vein compressor. You can see a rotor with the slots provided. In this slot, we have provided veins which is compressed by a spring to the outward direction. So when there is a gap between the rotor and the cylinder wall, the veins will come out. When there is not gap, the veins will go inside the rotors. So, as the air is entering from the left side, it will be trapped between the vein and the cylinder wall. As the rotor is rotating in a anti-clockwise direction, the air trapped will move towards the right side and it will reach the discharge side. So, before reaching the discharge side, its volume is slightly reduced. So, this reduce in volume will increase the pressure from point 0.1 to I. So, intermediate pressure rise you can see inside the compressor. Inside the compressor, so you have a intermediate pressure. For a root blower, we, we don't have any intermediate pressure rise. Only, only one pressure rise. But in a vein compressor, we have intermediate pressure rise. And when it is reaching the outlet side, its pressure is suddenly rise to the high pressure side 0.2. So, we have two types of pressure in a vein compressor. So this is a working and a PV diagram for a vein compressor and root blower. We have to draw the sketch neatly for the examination. And we had to explain how it will work and you have to draw the PV diagram. And here comes our centrifugal compressor, which is almost similar to our centrifugal pump. Central portion we have a impeller and surrounded by a volute casing. And at then we have delivery valve. And delivery pipe, we will not see there is a diverging type. That is, area of cross section is increasing in the delivery pipe. And this portion is called a diffuser. So, it will have some role in the centrifugal compressor. 
In centrifugal compressor, we have pressure rise is happening in two stages. First, isopressure rise is done by the impeller, that is, pressure is rise to some region, and second set of pressure rise is done by the diffuser. Q is equal to rho a v1, the charge will remain the same. So, area of cross section increases means velocity will be decreases and the pressure will be increasing. So, we will have two types of pressure rise in a centrifugal compressor. First one is due to the impeller, second one is due to the diffuser. Okay. And we have to study the velocity diagram for the centrifugal compressor, which is almost, almost really similar to the centrifugal pump. At the inlet is radial that is v w1 is equal to 0 and outlet we will have beta and phi or more all are similar to our centrifugal pump so we are not discussing in detail we will be using the same power equation for the centrifugal pump p is equal to rho a v1 v w2 u2 and rho a v1 is replaced by m mass we don't using v w1 u1 as we don't have any v w1 component in the inlet side so v w1 u1 can be taken as 0 and u1 and u2 are the blade velocity as inlet and outlet which is given by pi d1 n by 60 and pi d2 n by 60 and uh, in addition to that we will be studying an ideal condition for maximum work so this is our power equation for ideal condition v w2 is equal to u2 that means the ideal work done can be written as m into v w2 square or m into u2 square okay and here is the equation for discharge q is equal to pi d1 b1 vf1 and if we are dis dividing the discharge with a specific volume, we will get the mass. So, mass in specific volume will be will discharge. If we dis divide the discharge divided by specific volume, we will be getting the mass. As the mass of air will be passing, same mass of air is passing at a point 0.1 and point 0.2 of the blades. So, we will get the mass is same. So, we can equate pi d1 b1 vf1 is equal to divided by vs1 equal to pi d2 b2 vf2 divided by vs2. Where vs1 and vs2 are the specific volume of air at the inlet and outlet okay. and uh, we can from the triangle we can write vf1 is equal to vn and uh, breadth can be calculated using the equation mvs1 divided by pi d1 v1 okay and here comes out the main diagram that we have to study for solving solving problems related to centrifugal compressor here is a ts diagram so we will be compressing the air from P1 to P2. That is, the axial compression is from point 0.1 to point 0.2. And we have to study many other terms in this figure. So, we have to study each and every term, how it comes and how it is the relation between each term. Okay. So, we will starting from the point 0.1. As the air is entering the compressor, it will have some velocity. And that velocity will provide some energy to the inlet air. So, the, due to that inlet air velocity, the energy of the air or temperature of the air can be increased or we can write the total pressure can be written as P01. Even it is entering at a P1 pressure, it will have extra additional pressure which is due to the inlet velocity of the air. So we can write energy is equal to mcp delta t or energy is equal to half mv square. You are getting these two, mm get got cancelled, mm got cancelled, half mv square remaining will be, temperature can be equated to velocity square divided by 2 cp. So this difference, difference between t1 and t01 can be written as inlet velocity that is v1 square divided by 2 cp so this height can be written as v1 square divided by 2 cp similarly we have two outlet condition 2 and 0 2 these two can be written as v2 square divided by 2 cp so i have explained point 1 and point 2 we are normally compressing from point 1 and point 2 but the inlet air will have some velocity due to that its energy will be increased that is 0 0.01 and the outlet air will have some velocity always it will be larger than the v1 so that energy is given by in a ts diagram that is represented by v2 square divided by 2 cp that is obtained by equating half mv square is equal to mcp delta t 
So we get that value as a V2 square by 2CP. That is the difference between these two. Okay. And that is the same difference. This is the actual work done. And in addition to that, we have to discuss what is isentropic work. This is a TS diagram. X axis we have entropy, Y axis we have temperature. If we, we are compressing the air in an isentropic manner, that is, there is no change in entropy, then the compression will be happen from 0.1 to 0.2 dash. That is a isentropic compression. Again, at the point one, we will be adding some energy due to the velocity, it will be from 0 0.01, and at the end, we will be adding some energy, it will be 0.02 dash. So, isentropic compression with the external energy is equal to T01, T02 minus T01. Okay. So, we have discussed all four points 1, 2, 0, 2, 0, 2 dash, 2 dash, 0, 1, and 1. The first thing, isentropic efficiency is given by isentropic work by actual work. Okay. Isentropic. So, this is the difference by isentropic work. Isentropic work means 1, 2, 2 dash is isentropic work. So, we will be expressing in terms of enthalpy. So, H2 dash minus H1. That is the isentropic work. Actual work. Actually, it is working from 1 to 2. So, H2 minus H1 will be the actual work. So, H1 can be written as MCP T2 dash. H1 MCP T1. MCT T2 by. So, we can write isentropic efficiency equal to T2 dash minus T1 divided by T2 minus T1. Okay, and actual work done, actual work done is equal to, we will be working from point 1 to point 2. So, we will be subtracting MCP delta T. So, it will be, temperature will be increased to point 2 T2 minus T1, MCP delta And in addition to that, it will have some velocity. Outlet it will have velocity, it will have some energy component which is given by half mv square and inlet to have velocity energy component half mv square. So these two energy will also will be supplied by the work done. So when we are calculating the work done, we have to consider mcp delta d plus half mv square. Okay. Final condition minus initial condition for the temperature and the velocity. Again, isentropic work done means we will be MCP will be starting from point A 1 to point A 2 dash. Okay. Again, MCP T2 dash minus T1. Addition to that, we will be considering the velocity also half mv square. So, we have to consider both the velocity component and the temperature component for calculating the work. So, study this diagram in detail study each and every component and what is the relation between the other components. So, we have actual work 1 to 2 from 1 to point zero 0.01 velocity rise, 0.2 to 0.02 velocity rise, 0.2 dash to 0 0.02 dash again velocity rise, 0.1 to 0 0.01 again velocity rise. Okay. P01 and P1 are the difference created due to inlet velocity, P2 and P02 are the difference created due to outlet velocity. Okay. So, study this TS diagram and the required equation for working out the problem related to centrifugal compressor. So, normally, the weightage for the problem for the 5th and 6th module is less, even though we have to concentrate on problematic side, they will have a simple problem, so we can solve it easily. Okay. Thank you.